Very interesting, I must tell you. Now come on by me. So did it give you any insight into the parents a lot of leeway then? And I have to give the parents a lot of this. I'm speaking a lot with them. A lot of discussions we have to get. don't care about the kids. Mm -hmm. One thing they care, mm -hmm. they care of the happiness with these parents, what happiness is for the child. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I told you before in our discussions... What do you feel is the most important aspect of a good school? How do you set up a good school? I believe that the criterion who can give us the answer are the students. Mm -hmm. Because I think that um, every boy and girl, they want to learn in a good school. And the question is what a good school means to him or to her. First of all, they want to learn in a good level. What we saw in this school, even. They are coming to this summer courses because they want to develop. Mm -hmm. Secondly, even if the school is very large, very large, and in Israel we don't have such a large schools because we don't know if it's good to educate students in so big schools, I think that every child wants to feel that he's an individual in a school. And the question is how can you make better atmosphere? Better atmosphere, better atmosphere can make only if you think about the relationships between a teacher uh, and a student and it doesn't mean that the student mustn't have obligations on contrary 
only he has obligations and only if he has good education at home, he can be in good relationship with school. If he respects the teacher, even if the teacher is not always more intelligent than the students are, it can happen. At least you have to respect the teacher because uh, that's what we have. Every school is trying his best to get the better teachers. And I'm afraid that uh, in our period, it's not only in the States, it's all over the world. Um, people are accusing us, the educators, and they're forgetting that we have maybe 20% of influence of education. They're forgetting that the biggest influence is on communications and, uh, of course, on the parents. So first, if you don't look around yourself and you don't ask the questions, who is going to change a little bit the attitudes and the values of our society, which I think it, it has not very, very, very bright aspects today, I think that's not only the school. But how do you, you've been successful in reaching the parents? How do you do it? Look, I, I am trying to do as much as possible work with the parents. And with them, I am speaking very free, freely, and I am asking them, what do they think about education? Mm -hmm. I'm spelling a lot of time with things which are... Mm -hmm. one, one second. All sorts of noise. <laughs> I don't care. We're looking in uh, such a beautiful weather. <laughs> what do you feel the differences are between the school systems here in the United States and the school systems in Israel? Well, I have to be honest with you. I don't know uh, the system in the States. Only of having uh, such a briefly visiting here in this school, you can say what is the United States system. Because I know that there are different schools in the States, but there is one big difference. The public schools in Israel, they are the most popular schools in Israel, not the private one. Here, it's not like that. And I don't want to discuss about it because uh, it might be a lot of reasons for that. Anyhow, if a child in Israel must go to a private school, he is a very miserable one. Because the schools are not very well equipped the private schools, they don't have the best teachers. This is one of the major differences I see. Mm -hmm. The other difference, we are studying in Israel six days a week. And we have uh, quite uh, uh, popular today a system with the comprehensive high schools, which are trying to be very integrative schools, with different levels and different students from different societies and we are trying to pick up uh, the high uh, socio-economical areas to the lower socio-economical uh, areas mm -hmm. to the schools and I think it's true we are, we are trying to work it and it's some places we are succeeding very much mm -hmm. the two schools I'm running it goes quite well mm -hmm. Uh, we are teaching the, the students uh, between 38 and 45 uh, lessons or periods a week, mm -hmm. which is a long time, from 8 o'clock sometimes until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, except the extracurriculum uh, uh, programs we have. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's because that we believe that it's very important in these days to keep the children occupied and not to let them have too many time watching television <laughs> and uh, doing things which uh, mustn't be uh, very educated. Mm -hmm. So we're trying from one point of view to uh, isolate them from the surroundings and from the influence of the street and we're working too hard for that. Mm -hmm. This is the difference. I know that uh, the schools here are working very hard too, but still uh, the, they are teaching them only, I believe, 30 hours a week, mm -hmm. not more. 
We have the same problem, I think, uh, all over the world exists today with teachers because they are not well paid. And uh, I can't say that the best people are going uh, to education. And we have problems with the parents too, on which we're trying very hard to work. Now, the same problem you have and we have is uh, with the vocational uh, parts of the schools. Because there are, even if Israel, in Israel there are more than 50% of the kids who are going to professional schools, or professional part of a school which is, let us say, a comprehensive school, uh, the, the academic streams are much more popular with the kids and with the parents. Even we don't believe that uh, it's uh, so important for Israel to have a, a big uh, number of uh, academic uh, people because somebody must work. I didn't say that academics are not working, but somebody must run the industry. Mm -hmm. These are the main differences I can see. Uh, still, uh, we are uh, only on our beginning and we're trying to look around the world and to learn some things. Having school six days a week like that and having them in school for so long, how in the world do you keep them motivated? I didn't say that we are keeping them motivated, you see. <laughs> I remember when I was a, when I was a, a student, uh, we tried very hard, especially mm -hmm. that uh, we have, I think that our discipline is quite good. Mm -hmm. And it's because even we have compulsory uh, schools in Israel. Uh, there is uh, no an obligation to keep every child until the age of 18. Mm -hmm. The obligation is until the age of 16. So if uh, there is a child who cannot uh, be in regular class and who cannot study, uh, we are trying to find uh, some other way. And uh, if the children know that there is a possibility that they are not going to continue in school, mm -hmm. this is very important for them to know. So they know that they have to come to school to learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why they must learn and they uh, have to be in class. And uh, we are trying to motivate them. Mm -hmm. They are doing a lot of homework. What about discipline? I'm afraid that the, the discipline problems are not with the children. Mm -hmm. The discipline problems are with the teachers. Really? Because to be a good teacher, you need such a much, so much characteristic uh, things to have. It's uh, almost impossible. We don't have a lot of uh, discipline problems in Israel. I think from that point of view, we have quite a good cooperation with the parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Israel, there are a lot of schools in which the complaining is that there are two disciplines. And still, I didn't say that discipline is a bad thing. I think it's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. In our modern Western world, mm -hmm. you have to have discipline. Do the, obligations. do the students participate in the discipline process at all? Yes. In our schools, for example, we are not, uh, uh, we have no right to throw a child off school uh, without the exceptions of a, of a council of, of the students. And they are helping us very much because once uh, they speak with the child, with a student who is not very disciplined, disciplined in school, they are telling him, look, we have the right to keep you in school only once in a year, to give our veto. And we are trying to help you and to defend you. But if you lose this, your chance, you can nothing do about it. And uh, once a student knows that uh, he's losing even the support of uh, this council, he's trying to be a good boy. It does work uh, every time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 